you said two of your clients were assassinated. Why don't you talk about your personal interaction with these individuals, Jaime Roldos and um, Torrejos? Yeah, Roldos was the first democratically elected president of Ecuador after quite a few years of brutal military dictators who I'd worked with as an economic hitman and were very much supported by the U.S., by the World Bank, by my organization, and, uh, and by our CIA. By the, I mean, these guys were protected. And then they, one of them came along, a, a, an admiral, and decided that the country ought to have democratic elections. Roldos ran on a platform that said that the oil companies ought to, if they came into his country in big time, which they were doing, especially Texaco, uh, should be very careful to protect the Amazon rainforest where they were drilling, and also should make sure that the Ecuadorian people got a fair share of the profits made from Ecuadorian oil. Uh, and both Torrijos and Roldos strongly opposed Operation Condor, which was a CIA operation that supported right-wing dictators in Brazil, Argentina, and Chile, because at the time, it was the height of the Cold War, uh, and uh, it was assumed by Washington that, that Cuba was trying to take over the continent and turn it all communist, which seems a little absurd today when we think about Cuba. But anyway, that's, that's, that was the belief. Roldos and, and Torrijos were strongly opposed to Operation Condor and also these other things. I was sent down. I spent a lot of time with both of them to try to convince them to change their ways, to go along with our system. They didn't. Uh, Roldos died when his plane crashed in circumstances that most people believe were, were not an accident. Uh, Torrijos at that time said, my friend Jaime was killed by the CIA and I'll probably be next. Less than three months later, he also was killed when his plane uh, crashed under very uh, suspicious circumstances, very much like Roldos's. Uh, there's no question in my mind and most people that have really been close to the situation that those were both assassinations. In fact, I was just giving a TEDx talk in Michigan last week, and one of the other speakers was a former uh, Marine, uh, Major General in the Marine Corps, who was another speaker, and had been in Panama at the time. And uh, I asked him, I said, so what do you think happened to Torrijos? And he said, oh, he was assassinated. And I said, well, General, are you sure? And he said, I said nothing's 100%, but I'd say 98% certain, yes. And I said, who do you think did it? And he said, well, I think Noriega, who replaced Torrijos, did it. And I said, well, but wasn't Noriega a CIA asset? And he said, well, yeah, he was at times. Uh, we don't know exactly who was behind those murders, but we, we, I don't think there's, there's almost no question by anybody who was, who was knowledgeable in this that they were both assassinated. Now, I remember when you talked about our elected officials being vulnerable. And... This is in our country, in the United States. They're vulnerable to, to influence and assassination, you know, via publicity or in the public eye. But these people were assassinated overseas, right? So you see these politicians be assassinated. That's the stick. So they come to you as a, with the EHM, and you have the carrot. You have, you know, whatever special deal you're going to offer them or whatever they want or whatever their vices may be, that's their carrot. And if they refuse and they stand on principle, there's the stick. So when a, when a system operates like that, how many individuals would really stand up and, and be willing to go alone and, and be out there and be crushed? It's a critical question. People often ask me, didn't I have a difficult job convincing these presidents to basically uh, exploit their own countries and their own people? And the answer is no. In most cases, I didn't. I'm offering them these huge loans, which are going to make them and their families wealthy. We, 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 there's all kinds of systems set up so that they get money back, usually legally. I can get into that more detail if you want. But, uh, and at the same time, I'm reminding them that, and, and incidentally, this, the CIA's own website and recently declassified documents uh, admit that the agency participated in the overthrow or assassination of, of uh, Prime Minister Mossadegh of Iran, uh, President Arbenz of Guatemala, uh, and Diem of Vietnam, uh, Lumumba of the Congo, perhaps best known of all is, is President Allende of Chile, oh, who, yeah. was replaced, who was replaced by a brutal dictator who was a huge supporter of Operation Condor, oversaw the murder of tens of thousands of his people, and was praised by Secretary of State Henry Kissinger as a great supporter of capitalism. Our countries admitted to participating in the overthrow and or assassination of, of these presidents. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I don't believe in some overarching 
conspiracy to take over the world. But there's no question that there's been conspiracies. And our government admits to them. We've admitted to a lot of them. And, of course, our government is actually the biggest conspiracy theorist out there. They're constantly telling us that somebody's after us, ISIS, or somebody's conspiring to do something here. Uh, and I think we really need to face these facts, that, that our government does do these things. I don't like it, uh, and I want to stand up against it. It's, it's not part of democracy. And I believe that democracy requires transparency. It, it demands that we, that we question our government officials, that we, we ask them, and is this really helping us create a better world? Is this really helping us uh, present an image to the world of, of a country that, that believes in democracy and capitalism? No, it isn't. It's doing the opposite. I want to see that change. You know, you talked about, you talked about a Chile, and was Allende before Pinochet? Is Pinochet who you're talking about, the brutal dictator in Chile? Yes, yes General okay. Pinochet, yeah. So Pinochet comes into Chile, and he implements like a, a very, very, very harsh economic plan. And the brainchild for all of this was Milton Friedman and his uh, Chicago boys, right? So they send those guys down there, and they perform an experiment, and it completely destroys the country. Like it's 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 terrible, 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 and it shows that it fails. Yet. You said at the time that people were praising this man and praising all the things he was doing there all the way through when it was producing outwardly terrible results. Right. But it was producing really good results for our corporations. So the, one of the main reasons that, that uh, Allende was overthrown and that Operation Condor was put into effect was because of corporations like ITT, which you may not have even heard of these days, but... And that was a company that had huge power in the United States at the time, the big communications company. Harold Janine, who was their CEO, was on the cover of Time. He was very, very well known. It was a very powerful company. Anaconda Copper, which was a bigger U.S. corporation that was taking copper out of Chile. There were many other companies like that. And throughout the hemisphere, there were a lot of um, uh, oil companies and other big companies that wanted to see policies put into place that supported huge corporations at the expense of local companies and local people. And so that was the justification for, well, that was, that was the reason behind a lot of this. The justification was communism, that these people were accused, again, they was accused of being a communist. He was a socialist, but he wasn't a communist. Torrijos and Roldos, who I knew personally well, didn't like communism. They didn't like the Soviet Union. They were. They, they tended to be socialistic. They had. So, they wanted socialistic policies. They wanted their people to get a fair share of the profits from from these extraction companies. They wanted to have better education systems, better health care systems. But they were not communists by any means. And there's really, as we look back, there's really no evidence that Cuba was really trying to spread communism. Yes, Castro was talking a lot about such things and promoting a philosophy that was really more socialistic than communist. But he was supported by Russia, and so that opened the door for us to, as the United States, that is to say, uh, to, to go after these people as, as communists. We, we were terribly fearful at the time of the, the, the Red Scare, you know, that was going on. It was the Vietnam War was just beginning to heat up at that time, and we were terrified of communism around the world. 